which is solely responsible for its content. Hello, I'm George C. Scott. I have the honor of introducing the premier performance of the Hall of Fame on PBS, Mr. Lincoln, starring the noted stage actor Roy Dotrice. Now, this show is the first in a series of outstanding performances by brilliant actors and actresses, based on the lives of some of the world's most celebrated personalities. This is the kind of role that's an uncompromising test of a performer's talent. There's no place to hide, no huge supporting cast, no overpowering scenery. It's just you and the audience and whatever sheer acting ability you can bring to bear. And the results can be dazzling. And with Roy Dotrice, they are. For 90 splendid minutes, Abraham Lincoln lives and breathes in a performance direct from the stage of Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. You owe it to yourself to be in the audience. See you tomorrow at 9 on Channel 12. For a half hour of mystery, take a trip into the Twilight Zone with host Rod Serling, Sunday night at 10.30. This is WYES-TV, New Orleans. The following program is made possible by a grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company. It's Varsity Quiz Bowl, and today, Tom Becknell, Glenn Knott, Monica Summers, and Joseph Swanier from Thibodeau High School will meet in a battle of quick recall. Scott Grogan, Blake Page, Kate Hughes, and John Walker from Benjamin Franklin Senior High School. The alternate from Thibodeau is Brian Bappin. And the coach, John Robichaud. And the alternate from Benjamin Franklin is Richard Blackwell. And the coach, Pierre Blaine. And now, here's our moderator, Mel Levitt. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and welcome. Welcome once again to Varsity Quiz Bowl. This is another second round battle. The victor today will play De La Salle in round three. So we're looking forward to a great game. Before we begin, let me introduce first our judge, Dr. Ann Akers. Our score is Phyllis Hartley, the Associate Director of Records at the University of New Orleans, and our recognizer today, Mr. Beale over here from uh, Loyola University. He's an intern at WIS, Cliff Beale. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good to have you with us. Let's begin now with a face-off leading toward a 20-point land, yeah? First question is simply this. The Natchez Trace connects two cities, one of which, of course, is Natchez. For 10 points, what's the other? What's the other? Ben Franklin Page. Nashville. You're right, for 10 points, and Ben Franklin's on the board. <laughs> All right, Franklin, this is going to be a lanyap of an audio type. The work I'm about to play was composed by a man who combines strictness of form with profound and often somewhat mystical thought. I'll ask the question, or two questions, after you listen to this excerpt. Listen, here we go. That's part of a symphony that firmly established his reputation as a composer for 10 points apiece. Tell me the composer's name and what the symphony is called. All right, we'll ask for an answer, please. Um, Mahler and the Resurrection Symphony. No, this was Cesar Franck's Symphony in D minor. All right, we'll go on now to a face-off leading toward a lanyap this time of 30 points. He has scaled the precipice twice but failed to reach the heights. Twice this 23-year-old New Orleans jockey has failed to have a mount in the Kentucky Derby, but this year he feels he has his best chance ever to, uh, to win with Top Avenger, who has the best time of the season over six furlongs at the fairgrounds. For 10 points, can you name the young... Ben Franklin Page. Trosclair. That's right, Angelo Trosclair. <laughs> Racked up the best six furlong time of the entire season, and he may go right into the Derby. Who knows? 30-point lanyap coming up. Okay, for you trivia buffs in football... <laughs> And for 10 points apiece, the season never ends, never ends, really. Name the only three teams that have existed throughout the last decade, 10 years, without once making the NFL playoffs. 
There are only three teams who never got into the playoffs in the last 10 years, and we want you to tell us which they were. You know one of them, probably. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we'll ask for an answer, Captain. The Jets, the Saints, and the Giants. You got them all, 30 points. I think New Orleans is having it bad. New York's got two teams that have never been there, at least in the last 10. Here's a face-off. We're going for landing up now 20 points. For 10 points, complete the following saying. The hand that rocks the cradle rules the what? Ben Franklin Grogan. A home. No, no, afraid not. Thibodeau, can you take it? Thibodeau, back now. The roost? No, actually the saying complete is the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. We have another face-off. For a quick 10, tell me the name of the United States Colonel who was the first astronaut to make two journeys into space. First to make two. Thibodeau. Alan Summer. Shep. Alan Shepard. Mm -hmm. No. Ben Franklin. Anybody? Ben Franklin. Page. Conrad. No, it was Virgil Grissom. Virgil Grissom. Another face-off. For 10 points, supply the one word which fits the following pair of definitions. On one hand, a wingless insect. On the other, a contemptible person. Ben Franklin. Twos. Worm. What about that? Is it? It's not a wingless. Good point. <laughs> well, if it becomes Thank a you. if it becomes a butterfly, I don't know. What, give it to Thibodeau. We got to give it to Thibodeau. Anybody? This louse, you dirty louse. Did Cagney ever say that? Here's another face-off for ten points. What is the name given to the practice among banks and other lending institutions of refusing to make investments of any kind, including loans, in certain areas of a city because they're supposedly high-risk areas? has come under some controversy and criticism in recent years. It's called redlining. Redlining, another face-off. For a quick 10 points, what's the only British colony on the continent of Europe? Think about it. The only British colony on the continent of Europe is Gibraltar. Gibraltar. A quickie for 10 points. What kind of star is a pulsar thought to be? Specifically, it's a neutron star, they think. Another face-off for 10 points. Who wrote the following? Quote, what is happening to our young people? What's happening? They disrespect their elders, they disobey their parents, they ignore the laws, they riot in the streets, inflamed by wild notions, their morals are decaying. What is to become of them? End quote. Who wrote that? Anybody? Ben Franklin Twos. Jerry Falwell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he wrote it that way, although he might have. Thibodeau, Thibodeau. Anyone? Thibodeau, back now. W.C. Fields? <laughs> <No. laughs> That's a great question. I, this was written 2,300 years ago by Plato, <laughs> which shows you how long it's been going on. Our poor kids, you know, what's going to happen to them? Another face-off. She took a break from her movie career to fulfill a lifelong dream and harmonize with Barry Manilow on the last duet. A tune for his... Cur ben Franklin Page. Lily Tomlin. That's correct. Lily Tomlin, the last duet. The tune from his current album entitled simply Barry. You picked up 10, here's a chance at 20 more. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle chronicled the adventures of Sherlock Holmes through 56 short stories and four novels. For five points apiece, name the four Holmes novels. Remember, so many of those stories were short stories originally. But there were only four that, that came out in, in novel form. All right, we'll give you just a few more seconds, then we're going to ask you, Captain, to give us a list of four, if you can, please. All righty. Hound of the Baskervilles, Studying Scarlet, The Red League. Don't have another The Hound of the Baskervilles, Studying Scarlet, correct. The other two were The Sign of the Four and The Valley of Fear. You picked up ten more points, though. Ben Franklin. We have another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20 points. A year ago, Frenchman Jean Monnet, known as a supranational civil servant, died at the age of 90. For 10 points, by what other nickname was he known? Now, you don't have to get it exactly, but uh, he was known for a specific thing he did. He was called the father of the European community. The European community. All right. Another face-off. For a quick 10 points, tell me what is two to the zeroth power? Ben Franklin Grogan. One. That's right. It is. Ten points. If some of us older folks are shaking our heads, anything to the zeroth is equal to one. Anything. Here's a landing app at 20. The following of the top four record hits for the week ending January 31. For five points apiece, name the individual or group who is featured in each hit I will name. Number one. The tide is high. Blondie. Correct. Starting over. John Lennon. That's right, ironically. 
celebration. A uh, cool in the game. Right. And finally, <laughs> I love a rainy night. Um, Eddie Rabbit. Eddie Rabbit's correct. You got them all. And thereby picked up uh, 20 points as the buzzer sounded to lead in now to the rapid fire round. In rapid fire, once again, I ask the questions as quickly as they're answered. 10 points if you answer correctly, a minus five if it's incorrect. There are no second answers to any question. One per question until the two minutes is up. This week's rapid fire round is based on general knowledge of people, places, and things, all of which begin with a letter I. The letter is I. Let's go. Number one. Ninth letter of the Greek alphabet. Ben Franklin Grogan. Yoda. Correct. Productive agricultural region in southeastern California reclaimed from the Colorado desert. Ben Franklin Page. Imperial Valley. That's right. The villain in Shakespeare's Othello. Ben Franklin Twos. Iago. That's right. Wild goat of Europe, Asia, or Africa is called what? Ben Franklin Twos. Ibex. That's right. That part of the psyche regarded as a reservoir of the... Ben Lepi Franklin Walker. Id. Correct. In verse, metrical foot of two syllables, short, long. Short, long. Ben Franklin Grogan. Yambic. Right. Mountain in Asia Minor near the site of ancient Troy. It's called Mount Ida. Glowing with intense heat. Thibodeau knot. Intense? That's incandescent. General term for rocks formed by volcanic action. Ben Franklin Twos. Igneous. That's right. King of Saudi Arabia from 1932 to 53. Ibn Saud. Large wading bird related to the Herod family and the sacred bird of... Ben Franklin Page. Ibis. That's right. Or Ibis, one or the other. In the ancient Roman calendar, the 15th of March, May, July... Ben Franklin Grogan. Ides. Correct. Language from which Basque is believed to be derived was originally Iberian. The son of Daedalus, he flew too close to the... Ben Franklin Grogan. Icarus. Correct. That branch of zoology dealing with fish. Fish. Ben Franklin Grogan. Ichthyology. Correct. 19th century Norwegian dramatist and poet. Ben Franklin Grogan. Ibsen. Correct. What Mussolini was called? Ben Franklin Page. Il Duce. Correct. Homerian epic poem about the siege of Troy. Ben Franklin Grogan. Iliad. It was. Final adult reproductive stage in the development of an insect. Would be imago or imago. Ancient blue dye is ben what? Ben Franklin Grogan. Indigo. Correct. Christian martyr, Bishop of Antioch. Name was Ignatius. Large tropical American lizard, usually living in... In trees was the iguana, and the buzzer went off. Okay, that's the end of the first half. Going to tally up our score here. We'll be back in a moment, and then we'll uh, we'll talk to the individuals on the two different teams about their future plans academically. I think you'll be interested in that. Stay tuned. can be a painful crippler or merely discomforting. But arthritis is a disease that if you live long enough, you are likely to experience. That's what we'll be talking about next time on Here's to Your Health. See you tonight at 6 on Channel 12. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Uh, we'll continue with the game in just a moment. We have mascots here galore. This is, of course, the one for Thibodeau. The Tigers... All right, where do we put him here? We can put him in charge of Joseph Swanye. We're going to ask the youngsters who are participating on both teams about their future plans, starting with Tom Becknell. Tom, what about your academic plans? Have you made up your uh, mind? I'm not sure what college I'm going to. I might become a hermit after this game, <laughs> going to hiding. Oh, Hermit State is very good. It's North Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> but you haven't made up your mind yet? No. Okay, Glenn, what about you? Uh, Bajan Electrical Engineering at LSU or Louisiana Tech. Very good. Well, good luck to you. How about you, Monica? I'm still not sure, but it's between Tulane and Nichols, and I hope to go into medical research, and if not that, computer science. Excellent. Joseph? Oh, I haven't made up my mind yet. <laughs> yeah, not a year now. Well, that's right. You're a junior. You know, they're, they're, they're out there laughing at <laughs> your student body here, but if they had a year to go, they'd take their options, too. Thibodeau, it's good to have you with us once again. Delightful people. Ben Franklin, you've been in many a contest here. How about you, Scott? 
Uh, well, I'd like to go to either Northwestern or Boston University and compose music, write books, make movies, and be a fashion designer. <laughs> Is that all at one time, or maybe uh, one year at a time? Well, um, you know, day by day. <laughs> I see. And he's going to go to all four schools, too. Oh, never yes. mind. That's, God, that's great. Good luck to you. How about you, Blake? You. I'm either going to Rice University or Tulane and major in electrical engineering. Excellent. Katie? Um, I've applied to five schools in the Northeast, um, and I'm not sure where I'm going yet, but I plan to study everything once I get there. <laughs> and you're going to provide them with a mascot, I presume, like the one you did for this team. Yeah. Show them the mascot. Now, there is a mascot that will live in history. Cruel shoes, I call it. That's Snoopy's Snoopers. shoes. Snoopers, yeah. Snoopers. Beautiful. Snoopers? Yeah. It says it on the sole. Oh, it says on the sole. Yeah. Snoopers. Snoopers. Well, it sure does. Yeah, <laughs> now I understand. Right yeah. there. Those are Snoopers, and they went out of fashion 20 years ago. But anyhow, John, what about you? Um, I'll be attending Georgetown as a foreign language major. Very good. Good luck to all of you. Ben Franklin, no. great to have you still represented, always. There's the music that uh, heralds the beginning of the second half. So if you're ready, here we go. We're going to begin with this face-off leading up to a land yap of 20 points, team. This will be a visual, and we'll uh, ask you to direct your attention to the two monitors directly in front of you. Notre Dame's Dan Devine knows what it is to follow in the wake of many famous coaches of that team. So if you look ben here... Franklin Page. Newt Rockney. You've got the coach. Yeah, that's one of them. Newt Rockney. I say that, I mean, that's one of the famous coaches at Notre Dame, if not the most famous. You've picked up 10 points to start the second half. Here's a land yap of 20 coming up. I'm going to describe the creation or acquisition of four different geographical areas, and for five points each, you tell me what they are. All right. These, by the way, are all involved in United States history. First, it was created on July 16th, 1790, and its governmental status fixed Ju uh, June 11th, 1878. It is a part of the continental United States. Consider the dates and what we said, and give me an answer, please. In District of Columbia. You're right, for five. For five more, these islands were acquired by treaty on December 10th, 1898, and the islands became independent July 4th, 1946. Philippines. Philippines. Correct. It was acquired by treaty from Spain at the end of the Spanish-American War in 1898. It achieved Commonwealth status on July 25th, 1952. Its capital is San Juan. Puerto Rico. Correct. And finally, for a total of 20, it was discovered by Ferdinand Magellan in 1521, ceded to Spain in 1561, and ceded to the United States in 1898. It was declared a territory August 1st, 1950. It's one of the Mariana Islands, and during World War II, known for its goonie birds that hampered American airplane takeoffs and landings. Guam. Guam is right. You got all 20 points. <laughs> ben Franklin. All right, Franklin Thibodeau, another face-off. We're going for a land yap of 30. Is a big one coming up. One of the leading animal dyes throughout history was Tyrian, or royal purple. For 10 points, from what animals was the dye ben of... Franklin twos. Murex. No, no. Afraid not. We'll repeat now. We're going to repeat for Thibodeau, or aren't we? What did you say there? Okay. Murex. M-U-R-E-X. Murex are what? It's a snail. Correct. You're right. Yeah, that's what I thought. You get five extra points, Kate, for stumping all of us. <laughs> you got ten points. Well, I'm telling you, this is a humbling experience, emceeing this show. It is a snail, and that's where they get this particular die. We have a land yap of 30 points. It's one of those mystery figure land yaps. You receive 30 points if you can identify this person after one clue, 20 points after two clues, and 10 points if it takes all three. First clue is this. He was born in 1897 in New Albany, Mississippi, and died in 1962. Not much of a clue, but... William Faulkner. You got it on that clue. <laughs> Not much of a clue, but it'll do. You picked up 30 points. Another face-off. Okay, teams, we're going for a landing up at 20. For a quick 10 points, who was the governor of Louisiana when the Superdome was completed? Thibodeau, back now. Uh, Edwin Edwards? That's correct, it was. Edwin Edwards for 10 points. All right, here's a land yap of 20. All right, Thibodeau, here's a land yap of 20. Two South American countries are fighting pitched battles now along a disputed border high in the Andes Mountains. For 10 points apiece, name the two countries. Chile. Chile. All right. We'll ask for an answer. Ecuador. All and, right. Uh, Chile. 
Ecuador is correct for 10. The other is Peru. So picked up 10 more points. Tip it Ohio. Here's another face off. This is a war that's been hidden in the back pages of the newspaper. We have another face off going for a land yap of 30. Alvin Toffler, a former editor at Fortune magazine who coined the term future shock, has written a new book. It's called The Third Wave. In it, Toffler proposes that the first wave was the agricultural revolution. The second wave was the industrial revolution. Thibodeau, what? Becknell. The computer revolution? No, 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 we're, no, I'm afraid it wouldn't apply. And I'll tell you what we mean in a moment. Here's Ben Franklin. We're going to have to repeat according to rules. Must ring in Alvin Toffler, a former editor at Fortune magazine who coined the term future shock, has written a new book, The Third Wave. In it, Toffler proposed the first wave was the agriculture revolution, the second, the industrial revolution. For 10 points, what is Toffler's third wave? Give me a general description of it, if you will. It's the collapse of industrial civilization. This particular wave would involve the collapse of the industrial civilization or of the mass uh, media, mass culture, I should say. Another face-off, we're going for a landing up at 30. Most sedimentary rocks, such as shale, sandstone, conglomerate, limestone, consist of layers. For 10 points, what term is used geologically for these layered rocks? Ben Franklin, two. Strata. That's right, strata or stratified. Stratified rocks will accept 10 points. Ben Franklin, a 30-point lanyard. Noble metals are those elements that do not react with body tissues. Often they can be used internally. They do not oxidize in the atmosphere. For five points each, any six of the eight noble metals, please. Now, I have to accept only the first six answers you give, of course. No. These are the noble metals, five points for each. Uh, silver, gold, copper, and nickel. Silver and gold are two of them. The others are platinum, rhodium, ruthenium, palladium, osmium, and iridium. You picked up 10 points. Ben Franklin. <laughs> we have another face-off. We're going for a landing up at 25 for a quick 10. Tell me the name of the three climbing mammal, the tree climbing mammal, common in the United States that's characterized by a black mask and a ring tail. Tibet or not. Raccoon. Correct for 10 points. All right, Thibodeau. Ben Franklin had a pop music question. You got one coming right up. All right. With John Lennon's death, Beatlemania has given way to Beatle trivia. For five points each, identify the following. First, the Beatles' manager, when they first became famous, he later died from a drug overdose. What was his name? Bess. Bess? No, Brian Epstein was the manager. The original name used in Liverpool when it was just Paul, John, and George. The very first name. Silver Beatles? No, this was the Quarrymen. The name they were known by in 1959. Silver Beatles? That's right. Took Miss Summer's advice, right? High five. Oh, <laughs> okay. Got another one. The, the drummer later dropped for Ringo Starr. Yeah. Pete Best. That's right. And finally, the original Beatle who died before the big break came. Remember his name? Bevan. No, this was Stu Sutcliffe. Mm -hmm. However, you picked up 10 more points. Tim Ohio. <laughs> We have another face-off. We're going for a landing up at 25 for 10 points. Where are presidents, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Theodore Roosevelt found together, uniquely large in size, and all between 28 and 48 years of... Franklin. Mount eight. Rushmore. That's right. Mount Rushmore, South Dakota. <laughs> We've got a landing up at 25 points. Nancy Reagan is currently the first lady of the United States. For five points per lady, which presidents were married to the following women? Number one, Mary Todd. Uh, Abraham Lincoln. Correct. Abigail Smith. I'm John Adams. Correct. Claudia Alta Taylor. John Tyler. Better known as Lady Bird. Lyndon Johnson was married to Claudia Alta. Bess Wallace. Truman. Truman. Correct. And Elizabeth Bloomer Warren what? Well, you hardly ever hear her called that. Madison. No, no. no that's Betty, that was Betty Ford's maiden oh. name. <laughs> believe it or not. Picked up three, I believe. That's 15 points. Ben Franklin. <laughs> Another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20 points. Researchers are busy grinding up seeds and sampling the resulting paste. As they search for a substitute for that staple of the brown bag lunch, the peanut butter sandwich. For 10 points, what crop's being developed as a peanut ben butter? Ben Page. Cotton. No, no, afraid not. Thibodeau, we'll repeat now. Researchers are busy grinding up seeds, sampling the resulting paste as they search for a substitute for that uh, staple of the brown bagger. 
peanut butter sandwich for 10 points. What crop's being developed as a peanut butter substitute? Thibodeau, Beckman. Soybean? No, all around it, uh, used as a supplements in many cases. Sunflower seeds is what they're working on now. Sunflower seeds. Here we go with another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20 for a quick 10. What is the characteristic of the sides of a scalene triangle? Thibodeau, not. Uh, two are equal. No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin Page. None are equal. That's right, they're unequal. No side is equal to the other, or any other. Picked up 10, land yap at 20. The Tigers are from LSU. The Green Wave's from Tulane. For five points each, what is the nickname for these teams from the following universities? First, Stanford. They're called what? Stanford? The Cardinals. The Cardinals. University of California at Berkeley. The big university. Oh, Golden Bears. That's right. University of Southern California, USC. The Trojans. Correct. Washington University. The Huskies. That's right. Three of the four gives you 15 points. <laughs> Another face-off going for a land yap at 20. The Spy Who Loved Me is the 10th film featuring one of the world's greatest secret agents. Thibodeau, that now. James Bond? No, I'm afraid that's not the answer we're seeking in this one. You'll understand in a moment. Ben Franklin will repeat. The Spy Who Loved Me is the 10th film featuring one of the world's greatest secret agents. For 10 points, name the actor who plays 007 in this bond. Ben Franklin Page. Roger Moore. That's correct, for 10 points. <laughs> we have another land yap at 20 points. Years before the American Revolution, there was a spirit of rebellion growing in the colonies. Two of the main grievances were brought about by restriction on trade and the levying of heavy taxes by the British government. For 10 points each, give me the names of the following acts which were met with much resistance by the colonists. First, the act restricting trade and collecting customs was what? The Stamp Act? No, this was the Navigation Act. Yeah. Secondly, the acts by which taxes were levied to raise money to pay royal bills. <laughs> the Stamp Act. That's right, that was the Stamp Act. Get 10 points, Ben Franklin. Got another face off. We're going for a land yap at 20. This coastal city lay at the end of the Polish corridor and prospered in the 1920s as a result of Polish trade. Although it was essentially a German city administered by the League of Nations. Ben Franklin, the Rogan. Danzig. That's right. Danzig is correct. Now called Gdansk. That's 10 points. Here is a land yap of 20. The standard of currency for the United States is the dollar. And in England, it's the pound. For five points each, well, we won't quite make it. Rules say we end when the buzzer sounds. We're going to validate the final score, and we'll be back in just a moment to declare our winner official, the team that will advance to the round of 16. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. These are the faces of young Americans who took on the deadliest enemy in history. World War II, the epic battles and the words and emotions of the men who fought them. I'm Lloyd Bridges. Join me for World War II G.I. Diary. See you tonight at 7 on Channel 12. All right, the final score has been validated. It's official. The score is Thibodeau, 25, Ben Franklin, 415, and Ben Franklin's the winner. They're going to be... Third round as a result of this. Wow, you ran up an awful lot of points there, Franklin. And Kate Tews has the strangest victory uh, custom she's developed. <laughs> Most people have garlands of flowers. Show them, Kate. Yeah, that's right. You got snoopers, are they? They're snoopers. You can get them at practically nowhere. But anyhow, congratulations, Ben Franklin. Thibodeau High, you've got, what, one person coming back next year or two? Two. Miss Summers? Yeah. Raise your hand. Come on there. We... We're looking forward to it. And this time, you won't get caught in a meat grinder. This is a real, real tough team. So we're looking forward to seeing you back. Of course, Mr. Knott, Mr. Becknell, good luck to you. Ben Franklin, your next appearance, April, you'll play De La Salle in round three, another high-scoring machine, a varsity quiz bowl. That ought to be a good one. We hope to see you again next Saturday, everybody, same time. Goodbye. The questions on Varsity Quiz Bowl are prepared and authenticated by the WIS editorial research staff and known only in advance to the quiz master, producer, judge, and researcher. All 64 schools participating in our year-long tournament are matched by blind draw. Selections of team members and methods of preparation are the sole responsibility of the schools and their coaches.
The preceding program was made possible by a grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company. I am taking...